So tell us about how you went from atheist to Catholic. Well, I was, uh, first of all, raised in a very loving family. My, my parents didn't really have faith to share, but they grew up in the 40s and 50s in modest families. My dad grew up on a farm, my mother in a poor family in Milwaukee, and they absorbed the Christianity that was still in the air in the 40s and 50s. Very good people, moral people, raised my brother and me that way, but with no religion. And when So I no, was, you didn't go to church on Sunday? There was no <clears throat> prayer before meals? There was None of that. Did they, were they professed atheists? No, or, no. And no? in fact, uh, to the contrary, my, my dad, as an engineer, he was a, ultimately a nuclear submarine commander, and he recalls having had discussions in college with his friends about the existence of God, and from natural means, they decided this, this all couldn't be random, mm -hmm. essentially. There mm -hmm. must be something more creator, etc. So not professed atheists at all. And as I say, very moral people, deeply convicted people, beautiful mm -hmm. marriage uh, that lasted 49 years until my mother's death a few wow. years ago. Wow. And uh, profound examples, very loving, present. So very good. At a human level, I had a, a beautiful formation, but nothing to hang these things on in terms of the transcendent prayer. And in fact, I just had the impression that like all of this was uh, religion and uh, was kind of ridiculous. It was for stupid people who couldn't come up with like science has answers or right. weak people who couldn't deal with their own problems. Right. And so that was kind of the attitude. And I never had any, any examples or uh, influences when I was growing up who said the contrary. No one ever tried to convince me. And so I you went... You didn't run into Christians in school or... Not who were willing or? to witness to me. Huh. Uh, the closest would have been my soccer coach in high school, and I was on a top tier. We were second in the state, and he was a great man, and he was actually a daily communicant. And uh, there were other members of my soccer team. In fact, it turns out I found years later that one of them had been discerning priesthood, Catholic hmm. high school, but none of them ever witnessed to me. And, uh, and I didn't probe too deeply, sure. and I just thought, well, they'll figure it out eventually. And, so, so that was the attitude I went to college with. I went to Penn State. And by God's providence, I met uh, a lot of Christians. Uh, my circle of friends for the next four years, I met basically in the first week of school, and they were, uh, I think without exception, all Catholics going what, to Mass. What years were you at Penn State? I was there from uh, 93 to 98. 93 to uh, you just missed my band when I, I was in a band <laughs> I don't know if I've ever even talked to you about this I don't think so I was in a band that toured Pennsylvania colleges in 89 90 and we used to play Penn State almost every weekend all the fraternity part That's I won't amazing. go down there's some stories I, but I won't I won't go down but I what was the what was the place with the famous famous sticky buns did, did they still the diner the diner the diner sure. right right on on the main drag yeah, there yeah yeah we would go there after a gig. We'd get there like two in the morning and have those delicious sticky buns. So they were still there when you were there. I went there after I was baptized uh, in 1997. After you were baptized, you went to the diner? Because I fasted for the two days before oh, that. So I broke my fast, <laughs> my Paschal fast after baptism at the diner. <laughs> awesome. So tell, tell us, how, how did you go from atheist to I want to be baptized? What was the... Well, I... And I offer this as a challenge to all of our, uh, our listeners. My, my friends, who were all practicing Catholics when we started college and in science and engineering in the scholars program, when I said to them, like, you go to church? What are you doing? What, what happens there? Like, do you talk to God? And they were kind of uncomfortable. And then I was like, and does he talk back? Uh -huh. And then they totally changed the subject. So just really unwilling, un, unable to witness to me at all. Although I, I was a little bit provocative, I'm sure, but I was actually genuinely open if somebody had been willing to take mm -hmm. me aside, which they weren't. So several months later, though, uh, I was there over the summer, and a total stranger came up to me, an evangelical, reached out. I was sitting under a tree minding my own business, and he started talking to me and invited me to study the Bible with him one-on-one. -on -one. And you said yes. And I said yes. What do you—I mean— <laughs> The answer oh, certainly is the Holy Spirit, this? but what what, what well, you drew know, you? What? Somewhere in the midst of that year, I had started to open a bit to the transcendent. My cousin was there who was a philosophy major. We talked about some things. I read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I right, right. You know, just became open to f philosophically thinking about something transcendent. There's something bigger. There's something bigger, and I thought, 
I didn't think Christianity had a serious option, but I thought, well, whatever, this guy wants to tell me something. So um, I couldn't say I didn't have enough time. I mean, I had time, so... Are you in touch with this guy? Do you? I, we've we've been in touch. He yeah. knows you're a priest. Oh yeah, yeah. So he uh, uh, he came to my baptism, and then uh, he turns out he just lived a couple of blocks away from the Benedictines who run the campus ministry uh-huh. at Penn State. And then I came back as a priest at Penn State for three years, oh, which gosh. I think is the first time we met. Right. And uh, and I have reached. I connected with him then, and subsequently, yeah. So evangelical Bible study led you to what to faith in well and 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 let me emphasize one on one so he invited me to study the bible with him one on one and that's what this particular group does with college mm-hmm. students but but that one on one ministry became defining really for the rest of my life so this this ultimately turns into spiritual direction and mm-hmm. lexio divina mm-hmm. and you know monastic life in a certain way and he really played right into i mean in god's providence into the-